Let's talk about DIAC or override features or AMA or any kind of feature that helps you seeing things when you are in motion much more clearer. So we're talking about motion clarity and whether it's really worth paying the extra money for. In this clip, you can see noticeable fringing and coasting along the edges of the screen. Even when moving straight while reloading, a lot of motion blur is still present. Now with Diacon and premium enabled, there's clearly less fringing. Motion looks cleaner, more stable and easier to track. But here's the key question. Is that improvement worth it for everyone? The reality is, Diac benefits scale very differently depending upon your refresh rate, FPS stability, and even how sensitive you are to motion clarity. For most people, the biggest gain comes from going up to 240 Hz. Beyond that, features like Diac offer smaller, more situational improvements, and for some players, the difference may not justify the cost or the trade-offs. There are also a lot of claims about Diac adding input lag or halting responsiveness. So instead of guessing, we are going to just test it properly. This is not a sponsored video. We'll measure input latency, run control tests, and break down who Diac actually helps and who might be better off saving their money. Let's talk all about that right after my sponsor, Skillend. This video is sponsored by Skillend, the official partner of Team Vitality. They've got one of the best market rates for buying and selling your skins. Right now, the skin prices are really low, so make sure you take advantage of this. Not only that, if you use my link in the description or code KITCHEN, you can get up to $10 free on your first rate. They've got ton of payout options, the largest selection of skins, and a 4.6 Trustpilot rating. If you complete your KYC, you can now receive instant payouts in their new payout systems. So go out there and check out Skillend using my link in the description. First, let's talk about input latency, because in my case, my system is already pretty much maxed out. I'm running a 9800X 3D, an RTX 5070 Ti, DDR5 at 6000 mega transfers, and a 400Hz Savvy monitor as my main display. At this point, my baseline input latency is already close to the minimum you can realistically achieve on current consumer hardware. So with that context, let's look at the DIAC and AMA results. With DIAC set to off and AM is set to off, I had an average input latency of around 6.63 milliseconds. My best figure was for 4.78 milliseconds and my worst figure was for 8.94 milliseconds. Now with DIAC set to high and AM is set to off, my average input latency was 6.99 milliseconds. The best figure was 5.01 milliseconds and the worst recorded input latency was 9.27 milliseconds. Now with DIAC set to premium, AM is set to off, my average input latency was 6.99 milliseconds, essentially identical to the DIAC high. So yeah, enabling DIAC does technically increase latency, but the difference is around 0.3 to 0.4 milliseconds, which is small enough that it could easily fall within the normal benchmark variance. Now, for AMA or override testing, it works by increasing pixel voltage to speed up transitions. So in theory, it should slightly reduce latency. Now with DIAC off, AMA high, my average input latency was around 6.54 milliseconds. With DIAC off and AMA set to premium, my average input latency was around 6.5. Now what happens if you enable both of these features to their premium values? Well, you get an average input latency of around 6.83 milliseconds. Overall, these are very good numbers. AMA behaves as expected and DIAC's impact on latency remains extremely minor. What does this mean in practice? The key takeaway is simple. Diag does not meaningfully increase input lag. A 0.3 milliseconds difference is practically irrelevant in real gameplay. Where Diag does help is motion clarity, especially at very high refresh rates. In the footage, you can clearly see that at 240 FPS, there's visible chitter and blur. At 400 FPS, motion looks noticeably cleaner and more stable. When slowed down, the difference is obvious. In real-time gameplay, it's much more subtler, but still slightly perceptible. This is also how human vision works. Your eyes are constantly tracking targets with lateral motion. You're not staring at a single frozen frame. That's where backlight strobing and improved motion clarity actually matter. Should you upgrade? Well, my honest take, 60 from 144 Hz, massive difference. 60 to 240 Hz, Massive difference. 144 to 240 Hz, massive difference. But going from 240 to 360 or 400 Hz is not night and day 
change like you don't get much improvement but you still get a noticeable improvement but it's not like the improvement you would get from going from 60 hertz to 240 hertz or 60 hertz to 140 hertz 144 hertz so it's quite good it's quite nice technically the higher the hertz the better the things are going to look as we have seen in the test as well whether it is perceptible by eye to the degree of how it is perceptible from going from a 60 to a 144 well we'll have to find out in the future but if you are a professional or an aspiring pro you're really serious about gaming then yeah buying a monitor going from 240 hertz to 400 hertz would make sense for you but if you are just somebody who plays casually who is slightly competitive like your level 10 it's not going to hold you back your 240 hertz monitor still is good enough to you know make you hang out at the top level of the games but yeah if you're a professional if you're a content creator maybe you can kind of from 240 hertz to 400 hertz because it's still a noticeable improvement just not a night and day difference so here's my final verdict diax slightly increases measured input latency but the difference is negligible the visual clarity benefit is real, especially at higher frame rates. It is not holding you back from ranking up. Skill matters far more than the monitor refresh rate once you have reached to 40 hertz. So if you like Dyke, use it. If it gives you headaches or discomfort, don't force it. And yeah, maybe we should also convince Sontix too, if he likes how it looks. There's no real reason not to use it. Thanks to all the channel members and as always, subscribe for more data-driven CS2 content.